Welcome to IO Talks, your source for real talks with real builders in the blockchain industry. I'm your host, Larry. Blockchain is changing our world in many ways. While many associate blockchain with trading and money, we must remember that blockchain actually has the potential to help billions of unbanked, underserved, and less fortunate people all around the world. The borderless nature of blockchain can give local causes international visibility and provide a transparent approach to ensure donations are utilized appropriately and efficiently. In this episode of IO Talks, we talk to Helen High, head of the Binance Charity Foundation, who is currently supporting efforts spanning COVID-19 relief, Australian brush fires, sanitary pads for girls in Uganda, and much more. We discuss blockchain's impact on the charity landscape, as well as a new partnership between IOTEX and Binance Charity Foundation to donate staking rewards for charity. We hope you enjoy. Hi, everyone. Our guest today is Helen High, head of the Binance Charity Foundation. Welcome, Helen. Can you please kick things off by telling us about yourself and how you got into the crypto industry? Hi, Larry. It's my great pleasure to come into your podcast today. My name is Helen. I'm currently heading the Binance Charity Foundation. Uh, actually, I'm pretty new to the blockchain industry. I only entered the industry about three years ago. I was in development and I've been working in Africa for more than 10 years. So my passion is really to help the bottom billion to leave the poverty situation. So that's one of the reasons also why CZ invited me into heading up the charity foundation that's amazing as we all know blockchain is all about helping those that are less fortunate and really wanted to dive into what finance charity foundation is doing for the world but just to start off can you give us a short introduction about what finance charity foundation is and maybe some of the current initiatives that you're working on Sure. Actually, the foundation started three years ago from a very casual conversation between CZ and myself. So we were having lunch together and then we were actually after he was on the front page of the full magazine. And then we talk about the purpose of a person and we also talk about the purpose of a company. Before we talk about purpose, we actually talk about happiness. We talk about, you know, for a person's true happiness, you need four pillars. You need the past future, achievement, and purpose. And that's one of the reasons we actually spend a lot of time talking about, you know, even though he was on the front page of Forbes magazine, what actually is his true meaning of purpose, which he talked about it actually is the freedom of money for everybody. From that, we talk about actually what is the Binance purpose. Binance at that time, three years ago, is still very young. We realize it's very important actually to build up a company from success to significant at the very beginning. So from that conversation, you know, when we talk about purpose and then we thought we don't have to be super rich for Binance to help the others. Fundamental thinking is very, very simple. It's just to use what we can do to help others. That is the foundation why we set up the charity. Actually, during that conversation, CZ actually invited me to head up the Charter Foundation. I didn't say yes immediately. I said, CZ, you know, um, now you and me, we have this big passion, you know, to support others. But it's very important. This is not just a one-way street. We should also hear whether the people want help from us and we need to know what kind of help they need. So actually, two months later, I actually arranged a trip for him and myself to go to visit Africa. And in that trip, we met several head of states and then talking to them about blockchain and also crypto. What's actually very amazing is during our trip in Uganda, we met the president down there. And then he was 74 years old. Clearly, he's not very technological savvy. And then when we talk about blockchain and crypto, I don't think he understands exactly, but we discuss some very fundamental concepts, such as why we need US dollar today. And then he talked about in his old time during the butter days, he was exchange cow milk actually for chicken, you know, talking about that kind of exchange. And then after we discuss all those kind of very fundamental concepts, the president become very, very quiet about two minutes. And then he said to CZ, he said, listen, my friend, you know what? In this false industrial revolution, I think Africa should not be followers anymore. Today, we have our choice. We have our choice to determine our development path. We also have a choice to find our partners to help us. 
Therefore, today, I want to invite two of you to come to my country again, to work with my people, to teach them what is blockchain, and then to know how this technology could help them. This is something actually deeply rooted in what CZ and my heart. And after that, we actually officially formed the Charity Foundation. And then that is why you can see our first pilot project started in uh, Uganda. Yeah, I really love many things you said there, Helen. I think the first, the need to fit the solution to the specific problem. You know, I did a project for the World Economic Forum a few years ago in my consulting career. And we were looking at trends in financial payments, how to make them more inclusive, looking specifically at projects out of Africa, like M-Pesa in Kenya, where, you know, it didn't make sense to rebuild a brand new banking system. What made sense was building a mobile payment system. And that's what M-Pesa was. I really love the fact that you went on the ground with the Ugandan president to really understand the pain points. You also mentioned, you know, charities and some of the things that they don't do as well today, right? We see a lot of news, for example, back in the Haiti earthquake relief, they built a soccer stadium instead of running water, right? So there is still a disconnect between those that are giving and those that are in need. And I think it's the role of the charity to really guide that process. For those that aren't familiar about the basic mechanisms about a charity, how do you explain charities to a child? In terms of charity, I think in Christian thought, it is the highest form of love. It's signifying the reciprocal love between God and man. And this manifests in unselfish love of one's fellow man. So this is actually the old term. Actually, if I think about charity to explain to my child, I would say actually it's all about generosity and also helpfulness. One of the things you talk about that I fully agree is if you look at the current charity mechanism. This is a mechanism has been established post the Second World War, and it actually has never changed. But then because this mechanism is established by human beings, over the years, human being has always been taking advantage of this mechanism. For example, we know People are taking money from charity due to the untransparent nature. And whether all the money and all the support really go into the end beneficiary, how the intermediary being benefited from it, I think that has been a very big challenge in today's term. I'll give you some numbers. Let's say if you give $100 to a big charity organization, do you know exactly what's the percentage of it went into the end beneficiary? If you want to support a girl in Uganda, there's no direct infrastructure for you to help that girl. You have to give that one to an intermediary, which is a charity. But do you know how much actually the charity kept and how much it actually go into that little girl in Africa? Have I a would well say get? 50%. No, less than 25%. Wow. That's for wow. very established charity organization today. It's mm-hmm. not saying, you know, the intermediaries are bad, but intermediaries need a lot of expenses to manage, to make this situation. For example, they need staff sometimes even fly business class, stay in five or four star hotels. Uh, That's all actually come from the hundred dollars. Maybe they give 10,000 to a village, but then they need to hire the big four consultancy. They charge very high expenses doing the accounting. And also maybe they need lawyers locally. All those kinds of services is actually coming from the hundred dollars you contributed. This is why you talk about during your World Economic Forum consulting project. Actually, if you're looking at in the past several centuries, millions of dollars has been flooded in the underdevelopment world. But those places are actually still in a very tough situation because I think one of the things is too much intermediaries has been in the middle taking the advantage of it. And this is something I think with the technological breakthrough, which is blockchain and crypto, we can make this whole process more transparent and then everything is trackable. And in this process, I think it's an additional discipline for human behaviors. Stop taking advantage of the current system. Absolutely. You know, I always think about these new innovations against the backdrop of three pillars, right? One is technology, one is culture, and one is regulation. These three pillars definitely have a big impact on the way that charitable donations and the charity space in general are going to evolve. You know, I think we can talk about the technology aspect when we talk about blockchain and its role to fix some of this non-transparency. But on the culture side and on the regulation side, you know, I see the charity industry 
operating much the same as some of the other industries out there, right? Some intermediaries that benefiting from the existing system and to change the system into something that's more transparent or flat would require them to change their profit model. On the regulatory side, do you think it's a big gap as far as the government's role in assuring charities are doing the things that they say and also providing more accountability for these charities? Yeah, what do you think are the the big challenges? I think it's a combination of both, actually. I think the fundamental layers is actually human beings. Mm -hmm. I think human beings, if we're looking at the nature of human beings, there's good and evil. That is why I think human beings need structure to discipline ourselves. And as I said, the current charity infrastructure, there's not enough discipline actually for the intermediaries. That's why there is loopholes for the intermediaries can take advantage of. And this is something I think with technology, we are going to learn how to work with machineries. And the machinery is going to add a new layer for the human behavior discipline. I think once the transparent infrastructure is set it up, this is actually going to work backwards to help human beings to do the right thing. And the, the next layer is the regulatory perspective. I think on the regulatory perspective, currently there is a information asymmetry because a, a lot of regulators, they don't understand technology. And that's why to educate them is actually also taking time because without that right knowledge, they cannot put the right regulation into the space. That is why I think the third point is really important. In this stage, what we really need is industry shapers. And that is how Binance and Binance Charity, we position ourselves as industry shapers. We want to engage with the regulators and we want to work with the local people and then we want to work with all the people around it to form the new ecosystem to people believe in this quick success and then we can do a bigger snowballing effect. This is how we position ourselves. Absolutely. Just getting started with something that's tangible and digestible for people is very important. I think it's a good time to understand from your perspective how blockchain and cryptocurrency solve one or more of the issues that you mentioned, right? We always hear about stablecoins' impact on charitable donations for traceability. The purchase orders or invoices themselves are on the blockchain, uh, IoT to ensure deliveries, etc. Where do you see the biggest opportunities for blockchain and how do you see the progression you know, over yeah. the next few years? Yeah, I think transparency is the first step. For example, you know, the first project we launched in Uganda is to supporting poor children for their lunches because we all know education is important. But actually, when we went to Uganda, we learned a lot of young children, they went to the school empty stomach. They have no willingness to even listen to the class. So this is something when we went there, we asked them, what do you need the most? Do you need more books? They told me, we need our stomach full. Can you support lunch for us? So at least we have the energy to last to the end of the day. So that's we started the free lunch for children at school, you know, providing them free lunches. And then going back to the example I gave to you, if you give $100 to a charity foundation saying, hey, I want to support all those poor children in Africa for their lunches, you have no idea how much of the $100 actually turn into the food, into a children's plate. But in our charity foundation, I can tell you, 93% of your $100 turn into food, into children's plate. And the 7% is the cost we pay for local people preparing that food. There's no government official corruptions and Binance is not taking a single penny from your $100. And we're not only saying this because everything is transparently recorded on the blockchain. We didn't use any big four consulting company. We didn't use your hundred dollars to pay for that. We didn't use your hundred dollars to pay for our flight ticket. So everything we're not saying it, everything is transparently recorded on the blockchain system. You can verify it yourself. So this is the power of actually the technology. And we think this is a huge saving of the efficiency and effectiveness of your generosity. You know, just to repeat that statistic, 25% of effective donations versus 93% of effective donations going towards the end cause. I think that's really, really incredible what you've done. You talked about two important pillars of addressing these shortcomings today, right? You talked about making sure 
donations benefit end users and not the executives in between. And that's through on the ground work to understand what is really important to them. You also talked about the transparency and the accountability side of things, putting these records on the blockchain so they're verifiable by everyone. I think another very big opportunity for Binance is just your global footprint. You have Binance Exchange in all of these different countries with community members around the world. How do you guys plan to take that global community and break down the borders associated with charity as well? That's a very good question. I want to even deep dive on that concept. Why actually the global footprint is so important? What really blockchain is bringing to the world is free transfer of values. What does that mean? Internet, I think, provided the free transfer of information. For example, whether you are in Colombia, Mexico, or Uganda, you can access information freely. This actually is unthinkable, you know, 20 years ago, because 20 years ago, you have to rely maybe on newspaper, and then maybe they hide certain things. You don't know what's the real situation. That actually is what Internet brought the revolution to the human history. But what I believe in the coming 10, 20 years, the new revolution blockchain brought to human being is the free transfer of values. Today, if you are in the US, you want to give support to a poor girl in a very rural area in Africa. There's no direct transfer of value between you and her. But I think blockchain can connect everybody in the world into one system. We don't have to rely on the third intermediaries for value transfer. Today, the fundamental issue is the bottom billion people, they don't even exist today in the financial infrastructure. They don't even have an identity. So in our project started in Africa, you know, while we're supporting this lunch for those poor children, what is very important is we're actually building the fundamental infrastructure for the future value transfer. Providing people the crypto ID, I think is building the fundamental infrastructure for the blockchain revolution. And this is very important, you know, for the global footprint, actually, for Binance. We love to go to more places, connecting with more people into this global infrastructure, and also working with various global partners, like your organization, so we can get the people really connected. Data is the new currency. Today, you and me putting our information on Facebook, but we did not get actually any advertisement fees, you know, for sharing our information. We don't even own our data because there's no infrastructure for us to benefit from the, our sharing our data. But I think this is something blockchain going to bring the real revolution to all of us. And that's why building this fundamental infrastructure, putting everybody into this is the key. Absolutely. You know, you talked about the importance of a two-way street, right? Information and value flow between donors and receivers, right? So we talked a lot about the flow between donors to charities and then to the end users. What about the route coming back? Um, A lot of people like to hear about the progress that their donations have made. But what other things do you think can be motivations for others to donate? How does that information come back to donors to inspire more donors to donate? I think in this whole process, reality is the best way actually for education. I don't think actually you've been to Africa. If you set up a lecture telling them what is blockchain, actually very few people want to listen. What is that? But then when you actually working on a project, working with people, and then that's why we've got children, young children come to us. You know, they came to our local project manager saying, Sister, I want to thank you. And now also I want to learn about this blockchain because it makes my stomach full. I want to know why this one is powerful. So in this whole process, I think we created a lot of education for people who have the willingness want to uh, learn about the technology. This, is, I think, is the fundamental pillar education for the whole blockchain revolution. And then going back to your question, the things can be flowed back, not making it a one-way street. All those records, you know, who received the donation, how much they received, all those things are transparently recorded on the blockchain system, making globally more people want to learn about crypto and want to partner with us to do more things in more countries, making more people's awareness. That's the best way, actually, to making a bigger impact. 
Absolutely. You know, I think aligning on the end goal, the vision is very important, right? Blockchain and all this technology we're working on are just the tools that can build out the visions that we dream of. But I think throughout this call, you made it very clear that Binance Charity Foundation really takes an end-to-end view of not only what regions and what organizations to work with, but also how those donations are flowed back to the, the real beneficiaries. You know, I think charity, it sounds like a very community-based role, right? So for those that are interested in learning more about Binance Charity Foundation and getting involved, what do you think is the best way to start and what type of opportunities can everyday people get involved with? Uh, actually, I, I would really encourage more people coming to our website and also to write to us to collaborate with small projects. And then, for example, the collaboration between your organization with us, we really encourage that. Because as I said, I think we're in this early stage of the fourth industrial revolution. It's really up to us to work as industry shapers, to pilot new things and make it work and keep trying you know, to make more things to work. That is the best way, you know, to inspire more people, you know, to come into the industry. And after all, you know, if I'm looking at the bigger picture of the development and human involvement post-Second World War, I think the second industrial revolution, you know, making certain countries, for example, like Asia had the economic transformation. But then if you're looking at the third industrial revolution, which is internet based, I think we're all celebrating the technological advancement. But then if you're looking at the world, the world didn't become a better place because compared with 20 years ago, I think now 1% of the global population is holding 90% of the global wealth. You know, poor people become even poorer, you know, through the internet revolution. And then richer people become far more richer, you know, on the top of the pyramid. And I think actually this blockchain in a way should have brought more harmony into the society. And this one of the things, you know, really inspired me, you know, from Satoshi's white paper. Uh, I think after all, technology should work for human beings. So I think what we're piloting now in the charity space is really trying to to discover the good things of human nature and then to let us to think how we can use technology actually not just only benefit us, should benefit an even bigger community. Going back to the question you asked me, technology should lift up human beings into a next layer of alignment and also humanity. We're really looking forward to work with all the community to becoming industry shaper, to shape the industry towards that direction. Awesome. You guys are really you know, leading this industry for decentralized charity. And I think that's a cause that everyone get involved with. So you know, one announcement we wanted to make, we're working with the Binance Charity Foundation to sponsor a node. And 100% of all the staking rewards will be donated to Binance Charity Foundation's causes that they support. So I think it's a very innovative and unique way to combine a lot of the community-based activities and the staking rewards from these networks to apply to a very great cause. So you know, you mentioned uh, the causes in, in Uganda with the pink care token, sanitary pads, and lunches. Uh, just to close, you know, what, what other uh, uh, interesting initiatives are you guys working with at, at BCF? that you know, these votes from the IOTEX community would go towards? Uh, first of all, I really want to appreciate, you know, IOTEX community's great support, you know. Uh, we, we, you are setting up a great example, you know, for the whole community. And then uh, in terms of project, uh, one thing actually I forgot to mention, during this whole COVID, uh, say, uh, you know, a global crisis, we actually, Binance itself, we donated more than four million US dollars, you know, using uh, the transfer parent, uh, you know, concept to support people around the world. Well, you know, the world, you know, there's no people are able to travel. People are so afraid touching US dollars or those kind of currency notes. Everything we did actually through blockchain. With less than two months, we were able to support more than 25 countries around five continents to support them on mask, breathing machines, to support people in COVID during this situation. So just finishing wrapping up, you know, the whole COVID project. But we actually also have more projects coming up. You know, for example, we're going to plan also to support animals in Australia. You know what, we plan to launch the animal token, you know, to making the support to animals, you know, for to tailor for the community. And also we have more education uh, support in rural 
uh, underdevelopment countries like in Africa. So I would say watch the space. More things will come out, you know, from the uh, Binance Dow Charity website. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I think zooming out at our world, right? There's no shortage of things that can be made more fair and more transparent, from nature to to human beings themselves to um, everything in between. So, you know, with that, want to urge uh, everyone listening to take a closer look at Binance Charity Foundation, whether supporting through IOTEX votes or direct contributions. Please take a look at the great things that they're working on. Uh, but Helen, you know, I wanted to thank you so much for taking the time today to really break down the charity industry and talk more about how BCF is fitting into it. Uh, did you have any final words for the viewers today? No, I just want to thank you for you inviting me to the podcast and thank you for your community's uh, support. You know, let's work together to make a, a difference for our generation and our future generation. You heard it from Helen. So everyone get on board with this charitable mission. And yeah, thanks you so much again uh, for joining today, Helen. Thank you.